Hey, you guys. So look, let me tell you something, baby. My whole day has been just all over the place. I was supposed to have been, that is even, that's not even proper grammar. Originally, I was supposed to um, record several different videos for you guys, but the day got ahead of me. It's like a day before a holiday. Typically, it's slow. It's typically slow at my job, but for some reason, everyone decided to get on Vivian's dang on nerves. You know what it is too, y'all? Oh Lord, see now I got the wrong hummus, but that's okay. Um, Christine is out all week, and I don't have to let her know this can't happen again. First of all, it's boring as hell working without her. Girl, look, I'm gonna send this video to you. We're gonna have to start taking our, our PTO days off together, and I don't know what's gonna happen, who's gonna be able to cover it. That's not my problem. This can never happen again. I'm bored. I'm having to actually use my mind, my brain, and answer these questions. Sometimes I'd be like, girl, I, you know, I do help people. I really do, but sometimes I just don't care. I'm just being honest, you guys. Not necessarily I don't care. Sometimes it'd be frustrating and I just say some stuff to get them out of my inbox. But today I had to actually think for Christine and I, and dang, I'm tired. <laughs> Y'all know I'm silly. Um, and I am kidding, you guys, I'm not serious. Please do not take that. You know, Christine knows I'm kidding too. Anyway, y'all, this is a chit chat video. I was supposed to chit chat and do my hair, but I watched a video by another YouTuber, Miss Delightful. She had, the reason why I'm giving an attitude is because I spent about 30, 40 minutes tracking down this stuff. It's not even that serious, but I did. She posted in one of her last videos a recipe for a keto friendly alcoholic drink. Now, my ass is not even on no keto. I'm about to have a bunch of carbs right here in front of me. But. What she described in the drink, I was like, I need to go out and find this stuff and make my own because that sounds good. So I'm gonna put, put it below. She sent me something just a second ago. This is root beer. It's a clear root beer soda, okay? Vanilla vodka, just a little bit. Like literally a little bit because I gotta go pick up JP here in about three hours. Just a little bit. Um, and some cherries. It's supposed to have whipped cream too. This is my first sip. Let me mix it up good. Yeah, that's probably gonna, yeah. Let me go get some more soda. <laughs> oh, yes. Ma'am, let me go Let me go ahead and respond to her text and be like, girl, mm. Y'all, let me stop it being extra. So let me show y'all what I'm eating. I'm eating relatively healthy today because yesterday I acted a fool and I'm gonna act a fool later on tonight when I eat. Um, Cause this is my first meal of the day and it's two o'clock. Uh, so this is my lunch. So I have here roasted chicken, pita bread, carrots, barbecue sauce, and I have some hummus here on the side, and uh, the referral drink by Rhonda. So y'all know what we do about this. We talk about what's in the streets, we talk about personal life, YouTube. Hold on. Y'all, I'm not good at this. You wanna know why? I have a mirror in front of me. I'm very particular how I eat. Um, Mmm, this roasted chicken with the barbecue sauce is good. JB is over at a play date down the street. That drink is bomb. So JB is over at a friend's house. Another reason why I'm not, I can't really have anything right now. Um, right down the street. They live right around the corner, y'all. JB, my child is six years old, so those of you who don't know. And um <clears throat> he's at that age where he still has imaginary friends for child. <laughs> His, and he could talk to his imaginary friends for hours, which I like that. He could play with them, uh, spank them, point out, let me know, I'm gonna get there. Girl, his imaginary friends are kids, are his kids. Two, well, how old are they? He has seven year old twins, child. <laughs> As his imaginary twin, uh, imaginary friends, excuse me. So he told me the other day, actually it's been a couple of weeks ago, because I told my best friend, I've been telling a couple of people in my family about this my best friend and everything, and they're like, um, uh, I, I told my best friend about this, and she could not stop cracking up, and I called my mom about it. But anyway, he's like, mama, can, uh, can you keep my kids for me? I said, do what? He said, yeah, mama, can you keep my kids for me for the summer? <laughs> I said, JB, no, you cannot, no. 
You better not drop those grandkids over here. I'm not keeping your kids for the summertime. No. <laughs> so, I told my mama, <laughs> she said, she said, when, I'm gonna, when am I gonna be able to speak to my great grandbabies? I started laughing. I said, child, you can talk to them on the weekend. She plays along because she's like that. So I had him to call her. And he said, hi, Granny. Um, he said, Granny, can you keep my kids for me for the summer so I can go to summer camp? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I started laughing. She started laughing. She said, well, what are your kids' name? He said, Abigail and Boris. Abigail and Boris. <laughs> so she said, well, baby, um, I can keep them for you if they're if they good kids. He said, yeah, they good. You know, Boris... Boris doesn't want to listen, but they good. I said, child. So she said she'll keep him right. And then he called my uncle, my, my, my daddy's youngest brother, and said, Uncle Glenn, can you keep my kids for the summer? <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> child, that must have tickled us. We, we got a kick out of that. And the thing that I had my best friend cracking up is, David and I were out. Where were we? We were somewhere waiting in line. Why did this child say, Mama, we left the kids at home? I said, Boy, if you don't hush up for these people think we actually left some kids at home, we left his kids at home. Child, no. <laughs> Those who've been following me for a while, I'm going to give y'all story time. And then we're going to get on to some shows I've been watching. And um, I'm going to talk about social media a little bit, y'all. Anyway, y'all, a little bit of story time, all right? Um, y'all, so my husband has an accident every year, and you can legit go back to some of my previous videos. <laughs> sometimes I talk about the accident, sometimes I don't. Last year, he had cataract surgery. First of all, I think last year he had two accidents. Last year, he had cataract surgery, he hit my car in the garage. This year, he hit a parked car, right? So y'all, I kid you not, this man has had an accident every year. And so I called him right when he had this accident. I said, what are you doing? You, your ass needs to start taking an Uber if you can't. He said, well, that's what insurance is for. The hell it is. Absolutely, it's there to cover us and the need of an accident, but you need to watch what you're doing. Hitting random cars at work, hitting my car in the garage. Last year, y'all, he's not a good driver. He don't watch my videos, but between you and me, he's not a good driver. Hence the accidents every year, right? So last year, we were on the set, no, we were on the one-on-one. -on -one. He, the one thing he does that just irks me, he brakes fast. He said, well, you got to make sure that you break all the way so the car stops. I'm like, what? The, this is not no 1950 vehicle. You ain't, vi you know, driving no Chevy. You're driving a modern car. You just need to tap on your brake a little bit, and the damn thing should stop unless something's wrong with your brakes, right? I'm not saying all that, girl. Look. So, he brakes really fast, and the person behind him hit him. We all were in the car. Me being the pleasant wife, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe someone hit us. When in my back of my head, I'm thinking, y'all ass needs to stop breaking so so hard. Breaking fast and hard. We jerk forward. That's how that's how I know he breaks too hard. You know what I mean? You don't have to do all that. He has a 2018 Acura. Is it an Acura? Yeah. It, yeah. M, M something, yeah. I'm gonna tell y'all the first accident he had when I was in a car with him. Cause I don't know what he had been doing before. <laughs> I don't know what he had been doing before, child. So we were in college. I'll give you some little tea, girl. Cause I don't talk about my, my I don't talk my, about my personal life that much. I really don't. Um, My husband and I have only been married for three years, but I've known him since I was 19 or 20. I've known him that long. I would be 39 years old. Yes, 39 and fine. I'll be 39 years old August 11th. I know I have a birthday twin out there. Um, August 11th, I would be turning 39. And I've known him since I was 19 years old. Now, we have not dated that entire time. God, no, girl. <laughs> no, but I've known him since that long. We dated off and on. I, I call him my forever boyfriend. Break up, get together. Break up, get together. I mean, I couldn't tell you how many times we've broken up. But in his mind, this is, this is tell you how, how crazy, I guess we both are. 
in his mind we never really broke up i guess that's kind of sweet and romantic too if you look at it in his mind we've never really broken up we've always just had a break and come together so yeah we have been dating off and on i met him in college so we were in college <coughs> and we were driving back from somewhere and i went to school in denton texas which is a uh, unt which is um part of dfw so which by the way y'all those of you who are in texas and dallas girl i did not know that why do they have all those tollways there's a tollway going towards denton i'm like i would be so dang on broke like are y'all serious so anyway i went to school and ended in texas we were coming back somewhere because girl my ass was whoo i was fat i'm not even gonna like there's no fluffy I'm right now i'm fluffy and i'm chubby i own it okay i'm sitting at 164 i own it back then i was about 198 on a good day we weren't even dating or anything we were just friends right so we were driving and it was it was getting dusk so it was around six o'clock where you could hear y'all know out in the country where you could hear all the mosquitoes and stuff we were going home <coughs> and he was turning to make a left hand turn on the light right left hand turn there was a division between the lanes like a cement divider child why did he turn it and hit the dang on divider going like 30, 30 40 miles per hour hitting it and look he had an old probe he had i don't know when he got this probe i don't know when i don't know he had it for a long time because my husband used to go to tyler junior college in the early 90s early 90s mid 90s i don't remember i don't know because that was way before me so he bought a probe right girl <laughs> And he drove the car till they broke down, which is what you're supposed to do. He's the only person besides him and my girlfriend, um, Jamila. She had her cutlass, girl. Who didn't have a cutlass? She had her one of those, you know, that gray ash cutlass. You know what I'm talking about? That blue gray ash cutlass. You from the south, you know what I'm talking about. She had dice in the yeah, girl. She had an old cutlass, right? And then <clears throat> Alex had this probe. Child, when I tell you this probe was toe up from the flow up. Yeah, we were young, 19, 20 years old. So he will let me drive it. Because he had a crush on me. I had options, but he had a crush on me. <laughs> That's just me keeping it real. Um, he had a crush on me. So he's like, yeah, you can drive it. So, girl, I will get in there with my, my my best friend till this day, love. The first time she got in there, I don't know what part of the car. It was under the engine. It was making some noise. We couldn't tell if it was under the engine or in the back because it was a two-door. It was making some noise. <laughs> and she said, Vivian, what is that noise? I said, girl, I don't know. She was like, girl, what is that noise? <laughs> I said, girl, I don't know, girl. It could be some mentions in the back. Some midgets in the back making ice cream, snow cones, girl. What, what flavor do you want? I don't know, girl. It had that type of noise. Whoa, baby. The glove compartment was tied with some old phone cables. Like, I kid you not. That old dial-up phone cables he dropped, he had, he had uh, tied it up. So, I'm getting back to the accident. I'm, I'm getting it, girl. I'm circling around. He had tied up the glove compartment because it kept coming down with phone cables. Child, why when he turned the corner in this accident, he hit that dang on medium, medium, and the glove compartment went flopping down. <laughs> Went flopping down, his tire busted, the, the, the front uh, front tire uh, just busted because of the impact. And um, I was sympathetic then, more so than I am now. And I was like, oh my God, what's, what happened? He was like, um, I can't see, it's getting dark. I'm like, you know, you know what, that, that was a sign then. Same excuse. He said, I couldn't see, it's, it's getting dark. I'm like, oh my God. We were at a gasoline station and he accidentally backed into someone. I'm like, oh Lord, in the same probe? Mm mm. So, y'all, let's get into these TV shows. So, I didn't even tell y'all that I binge watched Peaky Blinders, Peaky Blinders. At first, I wasn't sure if I would like it. And it took a couple of ep episodes for me to get into it. And I was like, you know what? I do like this. Um, and thank you, Buzzfeed, for that because she had mentioned it in one of her videos that she was. Um, I think you said you have been watching it. I loved it, girl. Not to give any spoilers away for anyone who hasn't seen the show, but it has different layers. Um, it, oh girl, towards the end, I don't even know what season it was. I was really in my feelings. I have never cried 
so hard of a main character dying. Cause I was, you, you know, you you were rooting for these people. Girl, I was boohooing, boohooing. You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. One of them, yeah, dying. I was like, oh lord, I'm not gonna. What else? What's next? So I'm ready for the next season. I think Tommy's full of shit. <laughs> Yeah, I need to watch it. So yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. I love it. I have been watching The Handsmaid's Tale as a female, as a woman. Sometimes when these, you know, these characters are going through this on the show, you're like, God, wait, like seriously, y'all, the show, if you're not watching Handsmaid's Tale, it's on Hulu, but if you have Showbox, you can download it. But it is not for, it's not for the weak girl. It's not for the faint of heart. Neither of those shows are, to be quite honest. Was watching Killing Eve. I'm not feeling season two. That's another one I stopped watching. I didn't realize that uh, the main villain is the same girl that plays in Dr. Foster. She looks, she's one of those chameleons. She, she has different faces. I, I didn't realize that was her. Couldn't do Killing Eve. Now, what I am watching, which is so different, and I absolutely love it, Glitch, Australian base. Let me give you the preview, girl. Australian base. Five people suddenly wake up from the dead. They were previously dead. They're not zombies. They're waking up. They didn't know they died. They're still walking around like it's 1984. And they come from different periods. Season two of that is really good. Is That one's catching my attention. I need to continue watching it also. But you know what's so funny is that, you know, when I'm watching shows, like, cause I, I watch a lot of shows that are, you know, based in other countries. So watching shows like Peaky Blinders, um, even watching like, uh, what is that? Uh, Happy Valley. Obviously, and Broad Church is another one. Ooh, if you haven't watched Broad Church, Broad Church is another one. It's obvious they have an accent. After a while watching this show based out of Australia, I didn't really know. I mean, yeah, I could tell they have an accent, but it wasn't as noticeable as the English accent. So I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. If anything, I'm watching old movies on Netflix, but nothing new, to be quite honest, you know. There's nothing I really want to see. I tried to get into um, Medea. Boo. Y'all. I'm probably going to be the um, the oddball when I say this. I really don't like those Medea movies. I remember I said that once at one of my jobs here. And this one of my coworkers who was black, she snapped. She like completely went off. And at the time, I was very new. So you don't know me and I don't know you, so I ain't gonna check your ass. It was like, his movies are great. You know, it brings a positive image to, you know, um, the black families. And there are some of us who didn't grow up with a black a black mother and uh, grandmother, whatever, and she represents that. I'm like, a man in drag represents, and this is no shade to anyone. But I'm sorry, but a man in drag does not represent that for me. And that's not really what it is about him. And that's me being honest. It's just, I don't care if you're wearing a dress. That's, but my thing is, is that I grew up with a grandmother. I understand if you didn't. I grew up with both parents in the household. Again, I understand some people didn't. But what, what he portrays isn't what my family is like. And there's some bits and pieces, yes, but... My grandmother was not like that, y'all. She was not like that. I don't do the Medea movies. I have seen some of them. I do like um, Why Did I Get Married? Um, I do like, um, but I just feel like, you know, Tyler Perry movies. Let me just say this, because I always believe in putting something positive. I think that he's done a remarkable job as someone who has who was homeless and has built his own company. That's an achievement in itself. Um, and, and you know, I'm not knocking him for that. Yes, he's very talented. Yes, he's a great writer. I just feel like he does better at the plays than the big screen movie TVs. And he's been very successful with his movies. Absolutely, there's no denying it. All I'm saying is, is for me personally, I don't like the Medea movies. I do like how, why did I get married and why did, why did I get married too? But again, I find that a lot of his movies have the same type of formula to it. No, stay to the play, play version, yeah, but no, not the movies, no. So anyway, y'all, enough of that. I wanna talk a little bit about, um, y'all, I don't really keep up with a lot of these challenges and stuff that they be doing on social media, but I was watching a video by Leia Godone and she posted, you know, I, I like the way her, her channel, the route to her channel is going by the way, but she posted about the cucumber challenge. And this 
the thing, I just don't understand why we feel like some of this stuff is acceptable in our society. I really don't understand why. Um, this is the thing I don't understand why people don't, what people don't get. Once you put something out there in the atmosphere on the internet, it is there. People can screenshot it, save it, make memes out of it. So why would you put your, why would you put yourself in a position to be made fun of? Are, are we not thinking about our future? You, I mean, are you not thinking about the possibilities that this could damage your credibility uh, later on in the workforce? I mean, clearly they're not, y'all. When it comes to me personally and the stuff I put out on my channel, um, and yes, I can be ratchet sometimes, but overall, I try not to be, uh, I try not to go there. You know, I try not to use the big flowery curse words. Or you know what I mean? I try to, I even try to be careful with what I wear. Yes, I am married. Even if I wasn't married, I am taken. I'm not out there. Um, and I, knew, I know some people are like, you can wear whatever you want, you know. You can, but be ready to be judged by the way you present yourself. Does that make sense? But anyway, y'all, I'm gonna try to wrap this up. Uh, I have so many um, hair videos and tutorials, y'all. I'm sorry, but I opened up that curl's daughter. I opened it up, the curl's daughter almond milk, and you guys saw the post I did on you on YouTube here a couple of days ago. I opened it up. I took a big a big whiff of it. No, it smelled worse than the cocoa cream. Then I looked at the ingredients. First of all, there were a lot of, when, when you start getting into a product having 20, 25 ingredients, that's not even, girl, that's like gasoline. Like, no, I'm not putting that on my hair, especially after having such a bad experience with the cocoa cream. And I really did want to support her. I think that she went too fast too soon. Um, and their products or I think they could have been very beneficial, but uh, uh, there's so many mixed reviews and a lot of her products are just so drying on our hair. And I'm pretty sure that the formula has changed with, like a lot of them have. Look, I told a guy today, he had a young man had approached me about some products at, um, at Sally's and he was like, you know what? I'm thinking about using the shade moisture. I said, boo, boo. I said, I'm, I'm not even going to, I want you to look at the ingredients first. I said, you need to be very careful with the ingredients. Look at the first five ingredients. I said, I'm telling you, Shea Moisture, especially that black soap line, is very drying. I said, turn it around. Turn it around. Second ingredient was alcohol. Now, it does depend on what type of alcohol. I will say that, too. I gave him my recommendations or what I thought would be great. But, yeah, y'all, I don't know. So, like I said, I have a lot of stuff coming up. I have this Rice Water Deep Conditioner by Curl Game coming up. I'm looking at some stuff in front of me. And Kriya... Not Kiara. Girl, I did the Clark Sister Store a, a brand. No, Kriya Botanical shipped out my products. I ordered some low porosity products from her. I ordered the deep conditioner, the leave-in, the shampoo bar, and a styler. I'm so excited. Um, and I may put her, jump her before the ORS. I have the ORS wash day with ORS coming up. I have a wet line with the uh, texture ID. I'm looking at some of the stuff, y'all. Wet line with texture ID coming up, y'all. I did have a uh, detangling comparison coming up with VO5 versus Suave, but some of this stuff, I don't think y'all gonna be able to find because I've never seen it before. Let me show you real quick. I have seen it, but I thought it was VO5. Suave's Juicy Green Apple. And I was gonna compare her to, I'm gonna compare this to the Kiwi. That's what I thought it was. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Kiwi by VO5. That's what I was gonna compare it to. But we ain't gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, we ain't gonna do that right now either. So, couple of, yeah, couple of those reviews coming up. Um, and wrapping it up, y'all. Gonna be ordering the Mish products soon. And yeah, y'all.